Okay, book of John, chapter 3, verse 22. John the Baptist testifies again about Jesus. This is after Jesus spoke with Nicodemus in the middle of the night about how, only one way to be saved, only one way to salvation. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing at Anon near Salem, which, because there was plenty of water, and people were coming and being baptized. This was before John was put in prison. Well, it had to be before he was in prison, because when they put him in prison, he stayed there until they cut his head off. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing, of course. You know, ask any minister or pastor today, and they'll tell you, the stupid arguments that are developing every day in the church. Men are arguing, usually men argue about who's the greatest. If they're not arguing who's the greatest about themselves, then it's about who's the greatest football team, who's the greatest disciple, who's the greatest pastor. If men are not comfortable in their own skin, content with their own lives. They will attach themselves to some great thing around them to make them feel better. That's just what I've witnessed in my life. An argument developed between some... Now, this is what I say. In the Bible, men argue with each other. Women gossip with each other. Men argue with each other. Women gossip with each other about someone else that's not present. That's just not what I've seen in life. It's in the Bible. That's what um, Paul says. Women tend to go around gossiping all day. That's how women make it through their work day. Gossiping with the other women around there. It's a pure evil. It's from darkness. From the devil... Women gossiping all the time about people. Men, men usually don't gossip. They argue and they want to fight each other over stupid things. When a woman is not comfortable with herself, she gossips about some other woman. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. Do you know how stupid this sounds? Be like if someone came to me and said, Hey, Dave, people are starting to go to Jesus to be saved instead of you. And then like, you know, CNN News, they shove a, a microphone in your face and a camera. What do you think of that, man? <laughs> um, what do I think? That I can't save people and only Jesus can save people? They're trying to stir up an argument. They're trying to cause a fight. They're trying to cause division among the believers. It's one of the devil's greatest tactics, division. I am a Christian, and my older brother is also a Christian. But we never argue about anything that has to do with Jesus, hardly ever. 
We always argue about something that happened when we were 10 years old. I mean, who the heck even remembers that long ago? But anyways, if we do argue, we never argue as Christian brothers. We argue as earthly brothers. No, 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 no. That's not what dad said. I'm the older brother. I, I remember exactly word for word what dad said. This is how it went. And then I will listen to him and say, no, no, no. You got it all wrong, bro. That's not what happened. We argue about earthly things. Now, if you allow that division to come in between you, it will also divide you spiritually. That's the devil. That's what this man is trying to divide them. He's trying to put doubt in the mind of um, John the Baptist. To this, John replied, John said, A person can receive only what is given them from heaven. Listen. Book of John, chapter 3, verse 27. If you could get this one verse down in your life, you will save yourself about 50 percent or more of the foolishness that you are doing now. If you can get this one verse down in your life concerning God, it will give you the perspective of why you have what you have and why you're always struggling to get something that you never have been able to get yet. Every time you try to get this other thing, it's like the door shut in your face. You don't know why. You just can't receive it. But it's something you really want. But God is saying, it may be something you want, but it's not something I want you to have, and it's not something that's good for you. So I'm going to shut the door, and I'm not going to allow you to have it. John replied, a person can only can receive only what is given them from above, from heaven. I can, a believer can only receive what God has planned to give them and when God has planned to give them and exactly what God is planning to give them. You cannot receive more, but you can receive less by rejecting what God wants to give you. I knew a man once, he was 24 years old. God said, move, move out west to a certain town. I'm going to make you, I'm going to turn you into a pastor and give you a very large church. The man said, no, I'm going to go marry this other I'm going to marry this divorced woman over here and take care of her. That's what he told God. And God said, do not marry the woman. Leave the woman. You're not married yet. And go over where I told you to go. The man said, no. That man had a really hard life for the next 30 years. He did not receive the church God wanted to give him. He never became a pastor. In fact, he started doing drugs, alcohol, pornography, and him and the woman ended up getting divorced after like 23 years of marriage. You can only receive what God wants to give you, but you can, re you can reject it. You can tell God, no, I don't want it. So what does God do? I believe personally he gives it to somebody else. Maybe not the exact same thing, but maybe something close to it. God is going to get what he wants. That's for sure. 
If you say no, God will tell you, well, you just don't know what you're uh, missing out on. But I'll give it to this other person. What causes a lot of division in families, and I've seen this firsthand. The older brother rejects God's offer and the younger brother says yes to God's offer. And the younger brother becomes more wealthy than the older, more closer to God than the older, has more possessions, has a more loyal wife, more, more better standing in the community. Not because of anything he did, it's just because God said, I will, your older brother has rejected this, so I will give it to you. What do you say? And the next brother says the same decision to make. Yes, Lord, or no, Lord, I don't want it. Or yes, Lord, thank you, I will gladly take it. To this, John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but am sent ahead of him. They already knew that. They were trying to cause division. They were trying to cause division, like when a fool tries to speak to wise people. You can tell if a man is wise or not because he will not argue back with the fool. He won't say anything back. The fool will keep going and going and going, but the, the wise man will say nothing. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom awaits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine, says John the Baptist, and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. I've heard ministers go off on that verse. Verse 30, Jesus must become greater and John must become less. But now John is in heaven with Jesus and he has become greater than he ever was in heaven. See, you're trying to make decisions that only God can make. You're trying to do something that only God can do or perform. You're trying to make plans that go against God's plans. You're trying to get something for yourself on this earth when God's only plan was to glorify his name and allow you to be a part of that. That's really what everything I've ever talked about comes down to one thing. Are we glorifying the name of God? The Father. Are we glorifying the name of his son, Jesus Christ? And are we glorifying the truth teller, the Holy Spirit? That is all this comes down to. You can make all the plans in the world. If you're not glorifying God's name, you're pretty much lost. You're just a screwball. You're just like one of those, you know, those spin tops you put on a table and you take a string and pull it and spin the top on the table. And, oh, it looks real good for a while. But then it starts wearing down, wearing down slower and slower and slower. And, slower, and then crashes out of, into the wall or something. Or crashes into your cat. <laughs> Meow! <laughs> I'm telling you. That's the best man can do. Caleb in the Old Testament said, Caleb, he said, I'll go by myself. And God said, tell Caleb not to go. I won't be with him. 
And Caleb was like, oh, man. But Caleb knew, if God is not going with me, I will fail. A person can receive only what is given them from heaven. John the Baptist is saying, my only job was to say, look, here's the Messiah, Jesus. Here comes the bridegroom. I, John, one of the believers, am, I am one of the bride, part of the bride. When the bride hears the bridegroom coming, the bride is full of joy. Yes, we are all the bride of Christ going to be married during the um, wedding feast, wedding banquet. However, not like on earth. It's a spiritual marriage. We will belong to him for all eternity, but we don't. I've heard crazy things. We don't turn into women so we can marry him. He's not having sexual relations with us on a honeymoon, no. That's all just from the devil. This is a spiritual thing. Jesus, Jesus is in charge of the angels in heaven, of everything. But when we get there, he won't just be in charge of us. We will become exactly like him. You know how a man and a woman leave their mother and father, get married, and become one. This is what young people are missing out on today. You don't receive those things outside of Christian marriage by, in the name of Jesus. You can't receive it. If you don't do it God's way, you won't receive it God's way. You say, oh, it's good enough. We just live together. Well, that might be good enough for you and your very low standards, but you're missing out on what God wants you to have. A man shall leave his mother and father and become one with his wife. You literally are spiritually one unit after you get married. And the longer you stay married and, and follow Christ, the more you understand this. Until death do you part, or the rapture, in this case, most people are coming up here soon. If you're just living with someone and you never got married, you never became one with your spouse, because you never married them. Or if you got married in some, you know, snake charming church where everybody's drunk and rolling around on the floor, it doesn't work then either because it's outside of God's will. The what he, he, Jesus must become greater, I must become less, says John the Baptist. The one who comes from above is above all. These things should not be confusing to us. Which is greater, an angel or a fish? An angel comes from heaven, a fish comes from below the water. An angel is way more valuable than a fish. A fish is something you catch and you eat. An angel is something that was created for all eternity by God. The one who comes from above is above all, and the one who is from the earth belongs to the earth. What does that mean, you belong to the earth? It means your body is made out of flesh. This is something they don't teach us in school anymore. It's kind of sad, actually. They don't teach in school what we're made out of. Magnesium, iron, you know, B, vitamin B12, phosphate, water, H2O. You'd be surprised all the elements... 
in our body are the same elements from the dirt on the ground, the dust, the mud. We were made from the dirt of the ground. And that's why a lot of people get sick today because you don't have any vitamins in your food anymore. You can pray all you want to God. But if you have a diet of Twinkies 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, you're going to get sick and die. If you have no water, no nut, just Twinkies every day. You will be dead within a few months. But when you die, you'll have a nice cream filling with a um, spongy outside soft texture. <laughs> when you're in your casket, they'll be like, hey, this guy's as soft as a Twinkie. <laughs> oh, I had to go for it. Look, he has white creamy filling coming out of his eyeballs. <laughs> What made him like that? Well, he ate like 7,000 Twinkies and then he kicked over. <laughs> he kicked the bucket. You have to do everything God's way. That's where God did not, you know, people, why are we getting sick and dying so early? And, and why is everybody 70 pounds overweight and, and sluggish and lean, leaning against the shopping cart? Just to buy their groceries. Why do we have makeshift wheelchairs outside of every grocery store in America just so customers can shop? It never used to be that way even 50, 60 years ago. Why is this happening to our bodies? Because you go in the store and you buy bleached bread... Bread made out of white bleached bread, wheat, bleached wheat. We buy sugar, sodas. We buy fat, things full of fat content, 10 times more than the bodies should not have that much fat in it. That's why God invented apples, bananas, pears, oranges, peaches, strawberries, rice, 1% fat. Potatoes, very low fat, 1%. Don't put, God did not invent cheese and cream cheese and cheese whip coming out of a can. That's why they don't have food labels on an apple. It just says apple. That's it. It's an apple. They don't have nutrition food labels on a banana. It's just a banana. It's good for you. God doesn't need to label his food. You know it's good for you. Jesus testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. Now, I've talked about this a lot in the past. When you, when you, when you ex reject God's um, offer of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, you are calling God a liar to his face. That is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. It's the only sin that cannot be forgiven, blasphemy. God speaks, okay? And right there in today's society, we should fall down on our faces like Job did and say, Lord, I did not know what I was talking about. God speaks. And in our stupid pride today, what do we do? We say, ha! Ah. Well, God was talking to me the other day. And I told him, no, thank you. <whistles> Woo, man. Wow, that's so, oh, geez. 
There's no hope for you. You've lost everything. Unless you turn around and go back to God and apologize and accept his offer. You see, when you say to God, no, thank you. You're saying, I don't believe what you're telling me. Oh, magic God in the sky and the clouds. You're rejecting him because you don't believe it. You're calling God a liar. During the seven years of tribulation, it says, anyone who receives the symbol on the hand of the forehead and bows down and worships the beast has committed blasphemy. They can never, ever be saved after that. That's the one sin that they cannot be saved from. Jesus said, if you curse the Son of Man, he will forgive you because of his compassion. But if you curse, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven. Jesus testifies that what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. When I said, yes, Lord, I believe you, I want to become saved, I'm saying, I believe what God is telling me. When the man next to me says, I don't believe what God's saying, I don't even know if I'm hearing from a God, I reject what I'm hearing, you're calling God a liar. You're in a conversation with the creator of heaven and earth and calling him a liar. You have no idea what you've just done. And unfortunately, you will have all eternity in hell to think about how you used to call God a liar to his face. And I'm not saying this lightly. I'm not making jokes. This is a very, it's the, the single most serious, you know, thing in the world. The Father, okay, for the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God for God, gives the Spirit without limit. See, the Spirit is telling John the Baptist what to say, but also the Spirit is telling Jesus what to say from God. Jesus says, I only speak or I only testify to what I have seen the Father do. Gives to the Spirit without limit. You have the Holy Spirit living in you as a believer. It's unlimited. You never will hear the Holy Spirit say, well, okay, that concludes today's lesson. So uh, that's enough for today. Now just go out and do whatever you want the rest of the day. You'll never hear the Holy Spirit of God say that. The Holy Spirit of God will wake you up in the middle of the night and start telling you something. This has happened to me a lot, many, many times. Where I keep like... in close to where I'm sleeping in the next room, a pen and paper so I can write down what I'm told. That's just a blessing God is giving to anyone who will follow him. It's not because, oh, I'm special. No, it's anyone. Jesus said the least in the kingdom of heaven will be called the greatest. But you have to be in heaven. If you rejected Jesus on this earth, there's nothing left for you. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands. Wow. All power and all glory on heaven and earth has been given in Jesus, and he's been seated at the right hand of the Father. And he keeps pouring himself out. Blessing after blessing after blessing down to the believers. 
We are accepting, we are receiving one blessing after another all day long. And then we will be raptured. We will avoid the tribulation. And then we will be in the battle of Armageddon. And then we will rule with um, Christ for 1,000 years and never die. We'll be in perfect spiritual bodies. Then a new heaven comes down and we will reign and be with Christ for all eternity. And nobody even knows what's going to happen. Jesus said, if you knew the things I have waiting for you, it's going to be things we can't even comprehend in our own current brain. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remains on them. Before I was saved, God's wrath remained on me, and I was an enemy of God. Now, I don't personally remember. I, I got saved around 10 years old, right at 10 years old. But like, let's say a guy gets saved at 30 years old or 40 years old. The first 40 years of your life, you were an enemy of God because God's wrath is re was remaining on you. And if you would have died before 40 years old, you would have gone to hell for all eternity. That's why the older you get, it's really like a miracle when you see like a 90-year-old man accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And finally let go of his sin and finally understand that as soon as he was saved, the wrath of God was removed away from him by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross.